So thank you so much for listening to Blue Sky Radio. My name is Yeni. Today is the 8th of November. This is at RadioWaterloo.ca. Uh, 102.7 FM here in Kitchener and Waterloo, Ontario, Canada. Uh, our website is RadioWaterloo.ca. And I'm really proud. To na- today we have with us Lisa Dearson, and she's the founder, director with the Equus Film Festival. Thank you so much for being on the show today, Lisa. Hi, Annie. How are you? Good. And yourself? I'm great. Thank you for having me. You know, we were in Canada, um, up in the Headwaters country back in, uh, oh gosh, I think it was July, doing a tour stop. That's amazing. Yeah, that's just around a corner from us here. It's really nice country around there. A lot of uh, equine-oriented, definitely. Beautiful, beautiful. We're going back again in, um, I believe, March or April. March or April. That's amazing. Did you want to introduce yourself to our listeners? Sure. I'm Lisa Dearson with the Equus Film Festival. Uh, we are now going into our sixth year in New York City in November. We have a lot of fun educating people about horse films. I can imagine. I was on your website, and there's lots and lots and lots of uh, films on there. Uh, how did Equus get started? A friend of mine, his name is Rupert Isaacson, and he wrote a book called The Horse Boy, which got turned into a film, a documentary feature film, about his son and his son's autism. And they went to Outer Mongolia and rode with the shaman and connect his son with horses because the horses were so major in his son's re-communicating and reconnecting with um, you know the world around him in a in a in a state manner that you know allowed communication to begin again and he was pretty severe on the autism scale. I've actually seen and, that uh, film. Yeah, I've seen that film. It's really amazing. It's it's like horses yeah. are like magic, definitely. Right, right. Well, I had that film, um, and I wanted Rupert was coming in to do a clinic for uh, for me, and I wanted to show. I wanted everybody that I knew to see that film because if you've seen it, you understand how intensely uh, important it is for people to understand what other people go through that deal with children with autism. Mm-hmm. And so I have a friend here that has a beautiful theater. And I asked him if I could screen the film when Rupert was in town. And he said, sure. And then I said, well, what if I get a few more films? And he said, okay, I'll, I'll give you a projectionist for the weekend because he wasn't using the theater. And that's kind of how it got started. So we, what we did is um, the first year I had 30 films. We ran at, uh, at the uh, Marcotta Theater. And then the next year we went into New York to Harlem. We screened in Harlem. I had three theaters for three days full of films, and um, we just kind of kept rolling from there. We've been in New York every year. This year we'll be in Brooklyn um, at a beautiful venue where we're going to be able to host a pop-up gallery along with the films because we do panels and discussions. JAR will be part of one of our panels on the Mustang forces, and we're partnering with the Mustang Heritage Foundation to bring awareness to, to the Mustang horse. And so we, we do a lot to bring awareness. Mm-hmm. It's really broad. Uh, I mean, just based on the entries uh, coming for this year, well, I guess the 2017 films, it's really, really broad covering so many different areas, which is nice to see that it's not just hitting on one aspect, but you're literally covering the therapeutic aspects and, like you're saying, Mustangs and dressage and all of these different different niches of that people can get into horses. So that's really amazing. Well, this year I had films from 17 different countries. Um, we have a filmmaker coming in from India. We have a filmmaker coming in from Finland, from Germany. Um, we've had films from Africa. If, if there is a story to be told about horses, we have a film film that goes along with it. Um, We were at World Equestrian Games this summer in Tryon, North Carolina for two weeks, screening films. I took 100 documentaries with me, and we 
every for every sport that they had at World Equestrian Games, from reining to para dressage, we had a film that covered that topic. So we were able to, you know, really uh, have something for all everyone that was in their audience. Mm hmm. That's really amazing that you're getting so many different countries involved also. You must do a fair bit of advocating and getting this word out across the world. Like, how do people get in touch with you, and how do you find people? Well, if people know a film is getting made, they usually will reach out to me. Uh, in, before we had the Access Film Festival going, there really wasn't any place for filmmakers who make equestrian content films to to have their work shown, to have anybody see their work, um, if maybe they would show it in their in their local area, and maybe their friends would get to see it once on a big screen, and then that would be it, and then the film would just kind of fall away, to the, you know, get put on the shelf. But what we do is we take these films out, we put them out in front of the public, not just the horse-loving public, but film film festival going public and we we take and promote the films we promote the films on facebook we on twitter we're on pinterest and we're constantly keeping these films in front of the public this year alone we have 85 entries um from shorts to features we have films from uh, like i said iceland and um uh, Norway, and we have um, a filmmaker from the Netherlands that was in last year. She brought three films last year. She's made two more incredible documentaries this year. Um, so we, you know, we just keep reaching out. If I find a film in production, I'll reach out and say, "Hey, look, we're here, and you know, we can help you get your film out to the public." That's really exciting, and the f the festival is starting soon in New York. Yeah, we're November 29th through December 2nd in New York City. Um, we're in, uh, what do I call it, um, just over over the river, the East River in um, Brooklyn. We do our pop-up gallery at the, we're at the White Hotel Cin and Cinema. Um, we'll have our pop-up gallery there, and then we do our welcome gathering kind of a VIP party with the filmmakers and the authors and the artists and guests on Thursday night at um, the Wild Horse of Sable Island Gallery, which is also in Brooklyn. Wow. And it's, uh, yeah, so we, we're just, we have some really cool stuff happening. Yeah, that's really obvious. Yeah, that's amazing. So what was your... What? Why was it that you were interested in doing something like this? What is your own background with horses, and what is your message that you're trying to get out, really? Well, oh, I've had horses uh, for as long as I can remember, um, and actually now we're we breed Lusitano horses, so I'm involved with a uh, a rare breed of horse, which kind of getting just that story out to make sure that there are still people who kind of keep these rare breeds alive um, with responsible breeding. We were very boutique breeders, so foal is bred pretty much so for an owner. Mm -hmm. um, but we, I, I always loved horses, always loved horse movies. To be able to have kind of created a uh, a job is all around something that I'm totally in love with, and every day I love doing what I do with it. Um, it's kind of, you know, it's a dream. Mm -hmm. You can't beat it. Mm -hmm. yeah. No, it is really amazing. It's definitely something. I wish something like this would have been around when I was little, watching Black Stallion and, you know, the Black Beauty movies. Like nowadays, it seems like horses, the, just the topic of horses is popping up everywhere, and it's amazing, and it's awesome. Well, you know, Misty was my gateway drug, uh, Misty of Shinkati. And this past year, we had a wonderful documentary called The Wild Pony Shinkati, which uh, kind of addresses young girls and the love for the Shinkati ponies, but also um, it's about a young girl who's battling depression and getting a pony and her journey with getting that pony and kind of getting connecting back with, with society. That seems to be the tone and 
what I love sharing with people of every film that we get in is that horses are the healers. That it doesn't matter that horse, it doesn't matter whether a film is from India where we had a documentary about young girls who are rescued from the sex trafficking industry and they use horses as the mode of uh, therapy with them to a film we had two years ago called Unbridled with a, um, a horse movie star, Dreamer, who's a Canadian horse movie star with Lindsay Cartridge, which that film, the subject of that film was girls who are rescued in the United States from human trafficking, from sex, you know, sex trafficking. It's a tough topic, but, you know, it gets addressed and they use horses all the time at these therapy centers with these girls. So it could be Indian, it could be, or it could be America. It doesn't matter. The whole message is the same. The horses are there to to heal because they they silently listen to us. They, you know, they're there. They they mirror us. Yeah, exactly. That's something that I'm a huge advocate for. Is definitely the mental health aspects of horses and the healing capacities, and just being near horses can make you feel better. And uh, it's nice that horses br are bringing people together all across the world. Uh, in times like these, we definitely need, uh, all of us need a bit of healing. Oh, yes, yes. And the, and the horses do it. We, we just finished working on a documentary kind of in my, literally in my own backyard this year. Uh, my stepdaughter's little boy is eight years old, and he has Down syndrome. And... Um, he was terrified to even go in the barn with his mom around the horses. Ever since, he, even in the stroller, he was afraid to go of animals. It didn't matter whether it was a dog, a cat, a horse. He just was terrified. And this past year, he's kind of gotten a little bit better with his mom at the barn, but he still wouldn't go past the Dutch door where it did kind of the, where that would keep him out of the barn. He would stand on the other side of the Dutch door. So in the beginning of the summer, we got him kind of a little bit more moving along, and he would at least go out in the pasture with us when we walk his mom's horse in. And so we had him out there one day, and we have an old pony, 27-year-old pony named Barry. Barry, I almost put to sleep last year, almost put him down because he had had foundered. He was in pretty, pretty sore, and, uh, and we nursed him through that last winter, and he just, he just didn't seem like he was ready to give it up, so I kind of stayed there with him, and we, we nursed him along. So Barry's out in the pasture with the girls, with the mares, and I asked Josh, I said, Josh, you want to get on Barry? And he just, he just said yes, and I grabbed him and threw him up on top of the pony, <laughs> told him to hold on to the mane before he even had a chance to react, and um, he just rode, and he's continued to ride, and he now is working with uh, Mario Contreras, who happens to be a head trainer at our Medieval Times here. Um, he's working with Josh because Josh wants to grow up and be a knight at Medieval Times. It's just, it's kind of an amazing story, but the horse, the pony has just helped him with his physical therapy, it's helped him with his speech, because you know Down syndrome children, uh, their muscle tone is, is not what other kids' uh, muscle tone is, they, they need to learn how to, to carry and, and move and exercise, and the, po the horse, the pony, Mary has just helped Josh with that all summer long, so it's been an amazing story, so we are, we're doing, working on a documentary on it that'll be in the festival this year. Wow. Yeah, that is amazing. That's really amazing. I worked at a group home and I had the opportunity to uh, bring uh, this uh, young man also to a stable uh, who had Down syndrome. And the smiles that he had when he was around horses and when he rode was just amazing. It was um, unbelievable. It was a good experience. Well, and that's the thing. We have these, uh, oh gosh, I'm going to say probably this year I have a minimum of a dozen short and feature-length documentaries of a feature-length documentary from Germany called Silent Comrade, but all dealing with horses and soldiers with PTSD. Mm -hmm. And 
how the soldiers get to listen to one. And every story is the horses are, are the unbelievable connection to helping these guys get back into into life. Yeah, it's it's just so powerful to listen to the same. It's you know, it's, it's every story is different, but every story has the same the same undertones. The horses, it's the horses, it's the horses. So uh, what I feel is the the mission with Equus Film Festival is those of us who love horses and those of us who are with horses and know that we we preach to the choir for the most part. You know, we I can tell you and you go, yeah, I know, I know, I get that. But the rest of the world doesn't get it. And slowly the rest of the world is starting to get it with the with uh, organizations like OK Corral and uh, PATH and EGALA that's showing the rest of the world that equine assisted therapies work. Yeah. Uh, you taking mini horses into hospitals. It's just amazing how well it all works. Yeah. So yeah, they're kind of a natural therapy, natural therapy there. Right, exactly, exactly, and it's more powerful. I've seen things happen in three or four minutes in a an arena with a horse, with a with a person with issues, versus watching, you know, <laughs> seeing them sit forever in therapist's office. Yeah, I've worked on both sides with it. You know, we we've done a lot of equine assisted psychotherapy with soldiers out at our farm, and um, they don't get anywhere in in talk therapy because the therapist doesn't understand what's going on. But you get them in with a horse, and it's it's just unbelievable magic. Yeah. It is magic, definitely. Alrighty. Well, your uh, the film festival seems to be. I was on Facebook, and there's obviously other other uh, Equus areas that you're going to be showing these films, uh, or something coming up after oh. the New Year as well. Uh, yeah, we well we when we don't all only do film, we also do books and we do art. We're, we do uh, we have an art contest and we have a literary contest as components to the film festival. And we're also working with a lot of our authors on converting their books to um, a video platform where they'll be reading or they'll be telling a story behind a film of, you know, the wild horses running if it's a wild horse book. So that it can either become a book on tape or a, uh, um, an, a video book, not so much an audio book, but more a video book. Um, because we've launched an online platform called um, Film Festival Flicks, and we're at the Equus Film Festival channel on it. And um, it's where you can go if you want to see the films not at a tour stop. You can get a subscription, do kind of like Netflix for horses, and watch watch the Equus Film Festival films. And we're adding more films um, every day. They're, they're diligently working on getting everything loaded up as we get it agreements with our filmmakers. So this is another way that our filmmakers can, can you know, continue to get the movie and then get their movies, their stories out there so that people can see what's going on. But, um, you know, we do that. We tour. We do tour stops. We do 12 to 15 tour stops a year um, all over the country and now Canada and we'll be in Germany this year and we're talking to people in the U.K., um, to take a collection of the film so that people can, you know, get to see this work. That's really incredible. You're getting a lot done. Uh, you're moving things forward in ways that uh, I'm sure a lot of people are appreciating. Uh, I know when I started this radio program, I had uh, I wanted to bring people on the radio, voices that were advocating for horses, uh, whether it was to raise awareness uh, against slaughter, horse slaughter, and uh, some of these people that are really on the front lines for wild horses. And uh, what you're doing is truly amazing. Thank you so much for all of your work that you're doing, connecting the world via horses. This is tremendous. Well, we have a, a film kind of making its New York debut this year called Their Last Ride, which we've been working with a filmmaker. Gosh, she's been with us now for years um, as she's been putting this documentary together. And 
we've had it as a short, and that's what happens. We get filmmakers who have an idea or they have a five minute long film and we'll show it as a short. And then it just continues to build every year until they finally end up with their feature length um, documentary or film. And our audience has been able to grow with that as it, as it goes. But Their Last Ride, um, that Nita Ride has, has done, and Aku Rodriguez is her filmmaker. She lives on the road in Marfa, Texas, right as the horses are in the truck. They go right past her house as they head to the yards in Presidio, which is where the transfer station is that the horses go through to go to Mexico to slaughter. And um, she is right there, and she sees every one of those trucks as they come by. And it moved her to to get this story out here to the world. And the documentary that's finished now that we'll be showing in New York is so beautiful. It's with the native, it has the most beautiful Native American music in the background. She's a Native American. Um, it's, it's just, it's, it tells the story about horses and slaughter in this country without slamming you over the head with the, yeah. with you know, I I have an audience that has watched the horse slaughter issue, you know, as it as it's been going forever. And you know, you can only show people so many times a horse in a stock getting a captive bolt. The audiences just can't. You know, you want people to see that because you don't want it to happen anymore. But you can't. You can get the story to people without hitting them with that image because. Those images don't ever go away. You know, you don't unsee this stuff. Um, and there is a lot of horrible stuff that humans do to horses that once you see it, or animals in general, but once you see it, you can't unsee that. And um, so me has been able to craft this documentary in such a way that it, it gets that message out there and it tells that story and it's impactful but it's also beautiful. Mm -hmm. So she's done a very good job. So we'll be screening that in New York, and a lot of people have been following it. It's called Their Last Ride. have been following it for years with us. So. Yeah, that's really good. Yeah, it definitely is a good idea to bring up uh, the positive aspects I know what you're saying and not everybody is able to and I mean no you don't want to look at the images and sometimes we want to think about the good stuff and that's more powerful yeah. sometimes and invites people well, and, you know you the Mustang the Mustang issue and this year we're really doing a lot on the Mustang issue I see you have our image up there right now our our main image for the Film Festival is a herd of Mustangs still tagged. Um, we're working with a, an author who is working on a book called The Mustang Book Project, and she's going around and photographing all of these incredible um, people who are working with Mustang horses to do the Mustang makeover challenges and that. And she's going and doing a, a really beautiful coffee table book about these horses and the people who are working with them. And so we're helping get this message out, but only, there's only so many times that people can see, watch those helicopters chase those horses down and mm -hmm. chase the donkeys off of their feet. And, and, and if I, I'm very lucky to have this film festival as an outlet to get these stories out there because I would be one of the people that would be sitting out there somewhere just waiting to take on one of those helicopter pilots. Uh, to me, the, the helicopter roundups are the most horrible thing that the BLM does to these horses besides putting them in the pen. Um, you know, if, if there's absolutely no reason to have the helicopters do what they do. And we've watched I've had documentaries in where they run horses for hours and hours. They run the hoof off of the horses. Um, we've had baby horses that they just run until they drop. And, and we have documentaries about that. People have, have gotten those stories out there. And I think that now the public, they know that the, 
the Mustang people, you know, everybody knows what, how, what, how the horrible way we're catching up. What we need to know now is what can we do and what is there that can happen to, to make the horses, to make it better for them. And that's happening through Mustang Makeover Challenge or program. It's happening with, um, I have a friend who runs a program in um, Tennessee, in Chattanooga, Tennessee, um, with a bunch of young girls, inner city girls. She partners them with, it's called the Mustang Leadership Program. She partners them with Mustang horses at her ranch. And the girls and the horses, after you listen to these young women talk, there's so many parallels. It gives you chills with what the girls go through being underprivileged and a tough, tough time growing up in tough neighborhoods to what the Mustang horses go through. And these girls end up showing these Mustang horses at upper level, upper levels of dressage. Um, we see, we have films now and where they're using the Mustangs in programs with the prisoners. There is, um, Randy Helm is running an amazing program in Arizona with prisoners. Uh, the revisitism rate drops dramatically when you, when you give these guys a skill with the horses. Yeah. So I think now letting people see the positive things that Mustangs can do for, for people, that's going to be more powerful than constantly showing them the helicopter around us, which just gets people mad. If you show people a film with young girls and kids working with Mustangs that are doing positive things and you can go there and help or you can go, you can get involved that way and help and make a positive change, I think that's going to be way more impactful than continually beating people over the head with images that I know they need to be seen, but... You know, it, it's more important to have people be able to, to see how they can they can make change happen. John's program with his kids, with the Mustang horses, people are out there creating positive change for the Mustang horses. So I think that's more impactful than, than the helicopter images. Mm -hmm. Well, it's showing the solutions for sure. and. Uh, you know, when you show a problem, if you don't show what a solution might be, then people kind of get stuck on the problem, and it's really frustrating, and you feel like, oh, there's nothing that can be done, or it's never going to change, whereas when you're showing people the changes and what some people have come up with to be creative. and if you look into it, and um, I've got to get her to set up a Facebook page. Um, the artist's name is, uh, her name is um, Rhonda, and I'll, give me, uh, Gregiano, Gregiano. I'll put the link up on your Facebook page. Um, her photography, she's the one that's doing the, um, the book, the Mustang um, book project. And all, she's visiting all of these amazing Mustang trainers all over the country uh, and doing and taking their image, taking the images. She sets up a beautiful background, drop, and does a book, gorgeous images of these horses for her book. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and that'll show... The Mustang in a beautiful light. Well, I, uh, again, just through our films, you know, we've been able to educate people that all horses in the world are all Equus Cabalus started on the North America plateau millions and millions of years ago. Everything comes back to North America if, if it's Equus Cabalus. And they've been able to find that out now. It's confirmed through DNA. Getting the BLM to accept the DNA um, is is been a difficult issue, but you know you can't it you can't not you know follow what what's true. I mean, the DNA doesn't lie. Um, there's a documentary that we had that was put out by the um, Spanish Mustang Foundation called. Um, Oh, Return of the Horse, and it's a beautiful documentary. We'll have it on our, uh, we're going to be getting it posted up on our uh, on-demand platform if people would want to see it pretty much so the only place you can find it. But um, it's just beautiful, and it, and it addresses the whole history of the horse in North America and how it 
got around the world and then coming back here. And when the Spaniards brought the Mustang horses back here 400, 500 years ago, the reason that they they did so well on our on, on our grasses and in our uh, in our grasslands and in our mountains is because they came home. You know, this is their this is their stomping ground. Yeah. So we need to treat the American Mustang with the same reverence that we treat bald eagles. You know, they they basically should be. They walked with woolly mammoths. They were here with the saber toothed tigers. We need to treat them with that respect. Yeah, that makes okay. sense. It makes sense. I mean, we need uh, some of the resources to uh, be be here for future generations. Uh, I mean, it seems like a lot of the issues concerning uh, wild horse roundups, it always comes back to who's after the land, really. Exactly. Exactly. There's a documentary that was part of our festival, uh, my gosh, maybe four years ago. Um, it's called... Uh, American Outrage, and if um, you get a chance, I know that you can find it on YouTube. Um, it talks about uh, when BLM came and took, they were uh, two Western Shoshone women in their 60s and 70s, two sisters, and they came and took their horses and they took their cattle and it's a story that goes, uh, that the legal battle goes all the way to the Hague. And the Hague ruled in favor of these women, and the American government still has not made it right by these women. And it all ended up being about mining underneath of their property. Wow. So, yeah, pretty, pretty bad. It pretty is bad. pretty bad. Well, I guess the, the more <laughs> advocates. Sorry, go on. I, I, no, it's a very powerful documentary. It sounds like it. I'm going to definitely yeah. look for it. Um, so we got introduced via JAR. Would you mind telling us how you got introduced to JAR? How do you know JAR? Well, JAR, oh, gosh, maybe three, three or four years ago now, has submitted a film to our, to our film festival, um, to his music video. And he came to New York, and uh, we met, and and just kind of, it's, it's hard not to cook with, with Jar. He's such a cool guy, um, but, but he's been a dear friend ever since then, and he's been involved in the film festival every year. He submitted missed another piece or two. This year we have two pieces, another music video from him, and we have a video called Project Arrowhead, which is about his work with the kids, with his inner city kids, his program with the horses. Yeah, that's really awesome. He's a pretty cool guy. Yeah, we need more people like that, that step up for uh, not just horses, but for people as well, and for youth, and for community, and especially bringing people and horses together uh, with these mental health uh, and skills building projects is really fantastic, because it's actually offering, you know, practical uh, experiences, as opposed to especially pharmaceuticals, that people end up on pharmaceuticals, where it does not really help you, but... Uh, some time with a horse and people that care about horses and keep, care about people, all of a sudden you get some real changes. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm, as I'm looking at your at the feed right now, um, I see up there the Gobi Gallop. That documentary, that's a, that's a filmmaker from Canada. Um, they are the, the, the Zilu Foundation. And what they do is they run this race every year in Mongolia. And they raise money to build schools with, from this race. And they're building schools for the kids in Mongolia that end up hunting for food and their supplies and that in the trash heaps that are all over Mongolia. This is an, it's an amazing documentary to watch. It's, be it's beautifully done. And the mission that this family has to help these, all these children there is yeah, everyone as Canadians should be very proud of this. Them. Julie is um, Lou, Lou, who um, I've talked to, and she'll be in New York with us um, with her film. It's just 
they're just amazing human beings. I really love oh. how. Yep, go for it. I don't know. I just it just amazes me how there's so many people out there. You know, you always only hear on the news the bad stuff, and I have so many films and so many stories and so many people out there that are doing unbelievably good work for the horses and the humans. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's, there there are those good stories out there if you just know how to look for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're feel-good stories. You're right. I mean, when we watch the media, it's a very negative experience usually, and nothing really positive coming out. But you're right. There's lots of positive work, and the people really are doing from the goodness of their heart, not because of the greed or money-oriented, but actually because they're caring about community building, or they're, you know, they're stepping up and doing things that maybe the government should be doing, but people are doing it now because obviously we're filling in the blanks, so to, so to speak. Well, you know what I think? I think when the people do it, um, you get you get rid of the, the corruption. Yeah. I like this with this group, with the Gobi Gallup group. You know, they're they're doing this work. This is their foundation. This is what they do. They're you know, and so you you've got the corrupt um, politicians out of the picture. Yeah. And anymore, trying to find politicians that that word doesn't isn't synonymous with with them is, you know, kind of hard to do. So, um, the people, when you, when you have groups out there that are out here doing good things, you find they're doing good things because they have the right mission in mind. They want to create positive change. They want to, they want the world to be better. Mm -hmm. um, where do you see Equus Film Festival in, let's say, five to ten years? Oh, gosh. Um, probably doing more tour stops all over, um, with different, with different groups of people. Uh, you know, we just keep growing. I can see our channel. Our channel is getting, um, to the point now we're talking to different, um, Mustang trainers, different horse trainers, different clinicians to do series, you know, that you'll be able to pay-per-view, um, you know, click in every week to new series. Um, adding the authors is really going to be kind of cool. I think that's going to open up a whole new new audience for the authors. When I mean, people don't have time to sit down and read a book, it's great listening to an audio book in the car, but if you're doing 15 minutes here and 15 minutes there and you can click on your computer and kind of watch but still listen to a book and meet, kind of meet your author that way, I think that will build a greater audience for all of these authors together. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, in, and just continue to expand. I, we're going to keep expanding, keep um, producing more. We're producing more. We just keep. We started a um, series last year called the Spotlight Rescue Series, and I'm working with one of our filmmakers. Her name is Julianne Neal, and she's out of Camden, South Carolina. She's working on the um, the little Barry and Josh documentary. But with the Spotlight Rescue series, we've taken issues that you find and stories that pop up on Facebook about uh, you know, horrible things happening. One of the things we did a documentary on last year was um, there in Meadville, uh, Pennsylvania, there was a um, barn that a lady was looking at a piece of property and to buy, and the guy, you know, told her that she, she could look around, and as she was looking around, she looked in the window of the barn, and suspended from the ceiling in this barn were 11 horses with straps under their bellies. Um, they were suspended from the rafters with chains and straps. They were hanging. Um, they were alive. Oh, my God. The guy would just feed them enough to keep them alive, give them enough water. Their feet had grown like ram horn because he hadn't trimmed them in years and years. She got the rescue, or the, went and told the police, well, the police, really the sheriff really wouldn't go because the guy was his buddy and took a day or two to finally get to the right people to get in there to get these horses rescued. Six of the horses had to be euthanized right on the spot. Five of the horses are now in 
in homes and we did the, doc the documentary last year on the hanging barn showed the horses uh, you know they're in great homes they are actually a couple of them are being ridden and they're with little girls that love them and they've got a great new life um, and, but this guy this guy it was just all about you know he's kind of batshit crazy and all about control Yeah. and so that's what he would do but People need to know, and this is why we started the Spotlight Rescue Series. You know, what is the is what's the outcome on this story? There's, I mean, uh, there's story after story that pop up of people finding horses in bad situations. What's the outcome? What can we do? We created a documentary now called "The Limit of the Law" that Julianne is working on. That talks about how the laws can change. What needs to happen? That'll that one will be in New York this year. Um, so, you know, we're trying to create keep and continue to create positive change for the horses through art and the medium of film, because I think film is probably one of the most powerful storytellers that there is. Um, you, you, you can get points across to people when they see it on film versus just reading about it or seeing a still image is just a still image. You see... You see the story happen, and and it connects with you. It, it makes you think. It's very, very powerful. Hopefully, we'll be able to be instrumental in helping to bring about an end to horse slaughter and an end to PMU mares and an end to nurse mare foals. The nurse mare foal industry is something I'd like to, to see ended today. But a lot of people don't even know what that is, so we have to educate people to what it is. Yeah. The same with rock horse story. The Tennessee Walking Horse, um, there's a feature film being being made right now called Austin Gal, which will kind of bring that right into the general public little, uh, living room to see, you know, he, this is what's really happening to these horses at, in the name of showing these horses. And, and it's not just the walking horse people. It's getting it out to the quarter horse people that, you know, that quarter horse get the, that head down there and the dressage people with the roker it's there we we're here to bring to shed a light with spotlight rescue series on issues facing horses and we do that through film and then we bring those films to the Equus Film Festival and we take them all around the world and we show them to people everywhere so that people know what they can do to help save the horses in their area Wow, it's really amazing. It's very inspiring. What you're doing is absolutely unbelievable. I, I love it. Well, thank you. Well, it's, a ho it's for the horses. Yeah, horses have a way of encouraging people to kind of step out of their comfort zone and do things that they may not otherwise uh, want to do or feel inclined to do. But horses have a way of making us do it. Right, right. Well, you know, and for, for people, all people need to do is go spend, spend an afternoon at an equine, you know, go volunteer for, for a weekend at an equine therapy center, you know, and, and see what happens. See the power of it. See the power of the horses. You know, see, watch them change people in, in moments, <laughs> you know. Literally, yeah. It's really amazing. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for your time today. Uh, do you have any parting words that you would like to leave the listeners with before we hang up the phone? Well, I would love for everyone that any chance they can get to come to New York to see the film at a film festival. If not, watch for us in Canada this um, this summer. We're going to be up uh, this spring. I think they want to bring us in in the spring. Now we'll be up in the. Um, in your kind of neck of the woods. So uh, we'll be doing that, a tour stop there. Um, check us out online at our at equusfilmfestival.net. Check out our on-demand platform. You can click right from our um, equusfilmfestival.net. You can click right onto our platform and get a free, you, everyone gets a free first month. So you can watch a few of the films and see if you like having the, the ability to see some really pretty cool equine con content that you wouldn't get to see anywhere else unless you get to a tour stop. 
it's really amazing. I mean, literally, I'm old enough that I remember that, you know, there was like a handful of movies about horses, really, and now it seems like there's hundreds of them, so it's fantastic. But with our collection in the last, well, since we've been screening, I, I have over 500 films in the collection right now. Yeah, that's incredible. Yeah, it, it, it's very cool. It's very cool. The stories are, are just, they, you just won't get tired. It's just, you, you know, you name it, you want to see it, it's there. Or if it's not there, it'll be made next year and get there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm sure it's inspiring other people to, uh, now when they know that there's a medium for it, uh, and mm -hmm. a place to watch. Well, and we've, been, we've, we've created new filmmakers. We have people who wouldn't have made these stories if they didn't know that there was a place to, you know, get awards, to get recognized for what they do. We give away close to 70 Winnie Awards every year for film and art and literature. So that, you know, to, to give these people who, who put their heart and soul into creating this beautiful art, you know, to give them the recognition that they deserve. Mm -hmm. It's fantastic. Well, you must have a busy week ahead because 16th of November is coming up. Uh, no, actually, we're not, not till the 29th. 29th this year. Oh, okay. After Thanksgiving, we're we're the week after Thanksgiving now. We think it's I think it's going to be a little bit better. The New York City is gorgeous at Christmas time, so um, people will be able to get to sneak over and and see downtown, see you know Macy's and everything if they want to go while they're here. And sometimes we have filmmakers and or guests that come in to see the festival, and they'll take a couple extra days and go to see Broadway while. While they're in New York, so you know it's it's a great location for our film festival. Mm hmm. Definitely. Well, thank you so much, Lisa, and good luck with everything. And please stay in touch. Um, it's been thank really you. awesome talking to you. You have a positive message and getting horses out there. I, I know all of the horse lovers appreciate it. Well, thank you. Thank you. We love, we love sharing the story. So. Um, and hopefully, you know, before we come to Canada, I'll let you, I'll let you all know when we're coming. Awesome. That's great. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you, Yanni. You thank have a nice day. You as well, Bye. Lisa. Bye. Bye.